I'm Emily Flake and I'm a cartoonist for The New Yorker and today I'm going to show you how to draw a kid. I am a cartoonist, a writer, an illustrator, um, teacher, performer, person. I had a child uh, seven years ago. Her name is Augustine and yeah it sort of immediately changed both the content of what I was drawing and how I drew them. I mean, it is funny though, because I feel like historically figuring out how to draw kids has presented a conundrum for many cartoonists. I mean, before he just does the like giant headed kids, Charles uh, Schultz's early versions, mm -hmm. they look so weird. I really like, especially before I had a child and you know, was just looking at them all the time, a lot of my pre-kid children look like little adults. So we have some examples of how you've drawn children in the past. Uh, let's talk about those. Must we? <laughs> <laughs> so these are examples of some cartoons that I did featuring children before I had a child. I actually use this cartoon a lot in um, teaching because I'm like, here is how not to do this. It's a father and son in a playground. Father is saying, son, if you can't say something nice, say something clever but devastating. And the father's sort of like taking a knee, has a hand on his son's shoulder, but the son's legs are very long. <laughs> Listen, there's a lot of problems with that kid. The kid's legs are very long. The kid's head is grown up proportion pretty yeah. much. He just looks like a tiny man. He does not necessarily read as a child. Now you really start to understand how big a child's head is in proportion to their body when you have to like cradle it in your hand so it doesn't break its own neck. <laughs> so the first thing is body proportion. When you draw a grown-up, let's say this is a grown-up. A grown-up is roughly seven and a half heads high. But a child is more like three or four heads high. Their heads are much bigger in proportion to their bodies. Also, the um, slide behind them is an absolute death trap. <laughs> it's like straight down. <laughs> so the other one is a mother holding um, her child, and she's also holding a glass of wine, and she's saying, It's a magic potion that makes everything taste interesting. I stand by the sentiment. <laughs> the drawing, again, the child sort of, in my mind, I was like, what would a rich child wear? And I sort of dressed her up as, as a Victorian like, ghost. <laughs> yes. Rich children dress like Victorian ghosts. She has like a yeah, full yeah. A beautiful bun. bun. Yeah, like I have never had a ballet bun. There's a lot happening with that child, but none of it is making it look like she's a child. That was another real, real child fail. There is the face of an adult. The eyes are like about halfway down. A child's face generally tends to have bigger eyes lower down. This helps them stay cute and the fact that they're cute is what keeps us from murdering them. Hey! That is how you draw a child. So after I had a child and had a real visceral sense of just how big a child's head is supposed to be, I started really paying more attention to the drawing 101 of a child's head is bigger in proportion to the rest of its body. So an example of when a newer one where the, the kid looks very kid-like is a couple and they are with a real estate agent and the husband is saying to the wife who's holding their child, I know the schools are great, but is this really the house we want to ride out the apocalypse in? Maybe it was just having held a child in that position for a long time. I feel like I was a little more successful in making a believable child. I didn't measure how many heads high she was, but I feel like it's a little better than the other one. <laughs> and she's not a ghost. And she's not a ghost. Yet. 